So now we are starting with the review of uh, mean and variance, mean and standard deviation, descriptive statistics. Now the basic idea is that in uh, mean, we use the symbol, which is sigma. Sigma means add it all up, summation. Sigma x means summation of x. Sigma x square means first square, then add it up, summation of x square. Now let's say I have five numbers. These are the marks that are scored by five people in a class. And uh, let's say the marks are one, two, three, four, and five. If I add it all up, this comes out to be 15. If I square each value and then add it up, this answer comes out to be 55. Now, when we talk about mean, the formula is sigma x over n. Sigma x is 15. There are five terms over there, sigma x over n, this comes out to be 3. There is a formula for variance. Variance is square of standard deviation. st square is sigma x square over n minus x bar square. If I just want to have a formula for standard deviation, I'll put the square root. So I prefer to write it for variance. At the very end, I'll calculate standard deviation if they ask for it. Sigma x square is there, n is 5, x bar is 3. So basically variance is dependent upon the mean and I get the value. Now there is also another formula. We should be aware of that, but as such, we don't need to use it unless the examiner has worded the question in a particular way. And what is that formula? That formula is uh, we have the values of X from each value of X subtract the mean square each one of these values. This is sigma x minus x bar square. This comes out to be 10. And the formula is right over here. Now, sometimes what they can do is that they can ask for this thing. They can give you in. They can give you variance. Of course, that is simple. Just multiply these two and you get the answer. Maybe we might have to equate this thing. Sigma x square over n minus x bar square. So one, two, three. This is the same thing as before. And four things are there. So out of these four things, if you have three of them, you can find the fourth one. Then we talk about some basic rules, or basic questions of past papers. It says Rachel measured the length in millimeters of some of the leaves on a tree. Her results are recorded below. So these are the values that's given. Now sigma x added all up, sigma x squared, Square each value and then add it up. There are 10 values that is in. We calculate the mean, we calculate the variance. And at the end, if they ask for standard deviation, just take the square root. That is pretty basic. Summarize data. You don't have to add it up. It's already been added up for you. The ages of 18 people attending an evening class is summarized. Sigma X is given, Sigma X square is given. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of the ages of this group of people. That's pretty basic. Uh, use, uh, show the 4SF value. Round it off to 3SF. If we need it for the next step, what is the next step? That is calculation of variance. So we use the 4SF value. And then we get the answer. Again, the 4SF, final answer, 3SF. Now it says one person leaves the group. And the mean age of the remaining 17 people is exactly 41 years. So therefore, 17 people remain. That means the value of sigma x and sigma x square will not remain the same. It will change. So now we have this thing. That's on the next page. That is remaining 17 people. I first have to find sigma x. So the mean is 41. 17 people remain, 17 into 41, that is 697. This is sigma x for 17 people. This is sigma x, the previous. What is the difference? That is 48. That means the person who left the group was of age 48 years. Now we need to calculate sigma x square, the new one. So what is sigma x square? You square each value and add it up. That means if a person leaves the group, his age should be squared and subtracted from it. Similarly, if one person was being added in the group, 
we would take the sigma x square for the 18 people and for the 19 person, we will put a plus sign plus 48 square. As simple as this. So 33951 minus 48 square, this comes out to be 31647. We have the new sigma x for 17 people, n is 17. Now go ahead and calculate the new standard deviation. So what are the two new steps? Basically, you need to calculate sigma x new. You need to calculate sigma x square new. Number of sample, 18 minus 1 is 17. That is also new. And all you have to do is to fill in this thing and you get the answer. Now, another question of this, not exactly the same type. It says the heights of a group of 28 people were measured. The mean height was found to be 172.6. And the standard deviation was found to be 4.58. A person whose height was this much left the group. Find the mean height of the remaining 27 people. So now uh, we have mean height was 172.6. That is of 28. First step, take this value, take this value, multiply. That is the sum of x for how many people? 28 people. Then... Uh, 161.8, what is that? A person whose height was 161.8 left the group. So sigma x old, which is right over here, minus 161.8, this is 4671, that is sigma x for how many people? 27 people. What is the x bar for these people? 4671 divided by 27, that comes out to be this value, this is exact. Something which is exact needs no rounding off. So now this part is done. The second part on the next page. Now it says find sigma x square for the original group of 28. Hence, find the standard deviation of the heights of the remaining 27 people. So it's giving you that hint. Original data is for 28. X bar 172.6. N 28. SD square 4.58 square. Plug everything over here. Your choice. Either make it the subject then plug in the values or plug in the values and make it the subject. That's personally, that's totally your choice. Now, in this particular question, what I've done is that first I took this negative sign on the other side. There is SD square, there is mean square. Put it inside a bracket, multiply it with N. So that gives us sigma X square. So sigma X square, this value is coming out to be that is sigma X square for the original data. Now, the person who lived the group, his value, his height had a value of 161.8, just like the previous one. So, since one person lived the group 161.8 square, this is subtracted from this value 83472.8.62. When I subtract, I get this value. Now, this new value, n is 27, x bar was calculated uh, on the previous page. That is 173 exact. We plug in all these values. We found the new standard deviation correct to 3. All good. Let's move on. Two different sets of data. So first we were talking about a person leaving a group. Before that we talked about summarized data. Before that we talked about the formula itself. Now two different sets of data like apples and oranges, women and men. Now it says a group of 10 married couple. That means there are 10 men and 10 women and three single men. So I'm adding three single men over here. So they, basically it's 13 men and 10 women. Now the basic thing is what you are seeing over here is that everything is sorted out clearly. It's not that I'm looking at the paragraph and just starting this calculation and then plugging in the value. No, that's not my style. I would first write everything down very neatly. Because that, that clarity will be reflected in my working clarity. That working cl clarity will be reflected in my grade. So it's not a wastage of time. It's just consolidation of your grade. So now it says those 10 women, they have a mean age of 41.2, standard deviation of 15.1. 41.2, 15.1, 10. For the 13 men, it's good that they have again re-emphasized. They have not left it up to you to decide that there were 10 men and 10 women. They have specifically sorted it out. So there are 13 men. This is the mean. This is the standard deviation. The, the first part only for two marks, keeping K 
keep in mind that S1 paper is of 50 marks. So the first part is for two marks. The second part is out of five marks. Five marks out of 50. That particular part is 10% of the whole syllabus. Sorry, the whole paper. Find the mean age of the whole group. Now, what is missing over here? I need to add sigma x from here for the men. I need to add sigma x for the women. I cannot simply say, okay, the mean is 46.3, the mean is 41.2, just add it up and divide by two. We cannot because the weightage is different. What you score on the P1 paper, what you score on the S1 paper, you cannot take just the marks and add it and multiply, divide by two. Why? Because the weightage is different. The marks itself are in the ratio of 60s to 40. Even if the mark were 100, 100, they would have to take 60% of P1 mark and 40% of S1 mark. So that weightage, that significance attached to it does not allow you to simply add it and divide by it. So now over here, this weightage is different. The number of people are not the same. The question is, if they were 10, 10, can I simply add and divide by two? Of course, yes. If they were 13, 13, can I simply add and divide by two? Of course, yes. But of course, they won't give that question. They have to make you work. So what is missing? If I look at the formula for mean, I am missing sigma x for men. If I look at the formula for women, I'm uh, the mean formula. I'm missing the sigma x for women. So just multiply, get this value. Just multiply, get this value. Add it both up. G stands for the group. So add it both up. That comes out to be this. Number of people is 23. And this comes out to be 44.1. Unrounded 44.08, it might be used in the second part. Now, based upon the same data, I can also calculate sigma x square for men. I can also calculate sigma x square for women based upon the standard deviation formula. That is what they are making you do in the next page. The individual women's ages are denoted by xw. Men XM by first finding sigma XW square, sigma XM square, find the SD of the whole group. So now this is the work for men. Uh, we just work it out. Now, this time I'm not making it the subject, I'm plugging in first and then evaluating it. In the previous question, I first symbolically made the subject, then plugged in the value. That's your personal choice. So now sigma m square is this. This is whatever the accuracy level is. I'm taking it full fledged. Similarly, over here, this is sigma xw square. So the men sigma square, the woman sigma x square added up. That is sigma x square for the group. X bar for the group, the unrounded value, that is 44.08. Now, this is very important because it's being squared. So that small error that small slip will be amplified because of squaring so be very very careful it's not a simple addition so then you find the standard deviation for the whole group and then you evaluate and then you take out the square root this comes out to be 14.0 correct two threes so now this thing is also done uh, another question of the same type i think i have solved this one Okay, now let's look at this question. Rani and Diksha go for go shopping for clothes. Rani buys four identical vests, three identical sweaters, one coat. Each vest cost $5.5, coat cost 90. The mean cost of Rani's eight item is 29. Find the cost of a sweater. Sometimes they even ask the most basic O-level type question. So this is 4 into 5.5, 3 sweater is 3 is 1 coat, that's 1 into 90. And the mean of these 8 item is 29. That means 8 into 29, that will be the total cost. I'm using this formula. So therefore, S comes out to be 40. The cost of a sweater is 40. Why have they written the word identical? To emphasize that all the 3 items, uh, whether they are sweaters or they are waste, they cost the same. Identical sweaters, their costing is different. Identical vest, their costing is different. The three sweaters are the same. That is why it's S plus S plus S, which is written as three S. Now it says Diksha buys one hat and four identical shirts. The mean cost of five items is 26 and the standard deviation is zero. 
Now, this is the concept of standard deviation. When there is no difference, when SD is zero, that means all the scores are identical. If scores are different, there is variation. There is standard deviation. There is measure of dispersion. If SD is zero, that means all the values are the same. So five into 26, how much is that? 100 plus uh, 30, 130. There it is, 130. Uh, how can you tell that Diksha spends 104 on shirts? SD is zero, all values exactly the same. One H plus four is, is uh, 130. So 130 divided by five, that is 26. Actually, that's already given away. So four into 26 is 104. One into 26 is 26. That means the shirts cost $104. SD is measure of dispersion. And that's how you get this answer. Now let's see what's over here. It's about mean and uh, this coding thing. So now over here, if you look at it, it says uh, there are five values, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. Sigma X is this, Sigma X square is this. This is mean, this is SD. What if I take these five values and the mean is three and the SD is two? What is the difference between these values? They were one, two, three, four, five. They were 100 plus 100 plus 200 plus 300 plus 400 plus five. The SD remains the same. Because the dispersion among each of them remains the same, whether it's 101, 102, 103, or 501, 502, 503. Because the difference among them remains the same. This gap that I'm drawing over here, this is not standard deviation. This is just letting you know that the gap remains the same. Yes, if I change the gap to 101, to 103, to 105, to 107, to 109, yes, the gap has increased. Therefore, the standard deviation will change. So this further emphasizes what that standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. The next thing, this is 103, this is 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is 3, 101, 102, 103, and so on, that's 103. That means if I take 501, 502, 503, 504, 505 without any calculation, because this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the same, then the a mean would be 503. Another way of looking at it. 3 is exactly in the middle. These two values are 1, 1 unit on the left, 1, 1 unit on the right. Therefore, this middle value is the mean. 103 is in the middle. Two values on the left, two values on the right, equidistant. Therefore, this is the mean. Again, the concept of symmetry. Now, what are they deriving over here? This forms the basis of coding. Uh, we have x, we have y. y is substitution. This is known as coding also known as assumed mean. That's the name used in the syllabus. So I have made a substitution since all the numbers, they center around 100. Let's make them smaller. Let's make them simpler. So that is one and two and three and four and five. How did I do that? Subtract 100 from each one. Now I'm working for Y. Sigma Y is 15. That's already done over here. And Sigma N is five. Y bar is three. Standard deviation is two. Uh, standard deviation after addition or subtraction remains the same. They don't ask for multiplication. Mean, whatever you have subtracted initially, you have to add it back. Y is X minus 100. Therefore, Y bar is X bar minus 100. Therefore, make X bar the subject. That is 103. Now, this is the basics on which we start working. Let's look at this question. It says that uh, the length of time, T minutes, taken to do the crossword in a certain paper was observed on 12 occasions. The results are summarized below. Sigma T minus 35 is this much. Sigma T minus 35 whole square is this much. Whatever is given in the bracket, we take that to be another variable. In this case, I've written it as Y. Y is T minus 35. That is step number one. Writing it down, that is step number one. No matter how trivial it seems. Next step, work everything in terms of Y. So sigma Y is negative 15. Sigma Y, is, uh, y, sigma y is negative 15. N is 12. Therefore, Y bar is negative 1.25. Sigma Y square is 82.23. And uh, similarly, you calculate the variance. That comes out to be 5.29. Now look over here once again. These are exact values. So if they are exact, use complete values. Do not round off. 
Do not write this thing as uh, 6.86 and 1.56, nothing like that. Just use the exact value because exact needs no rounding off. So this is the variance. Now it says calculate mean and standard deviation. Just hold for a second. Now step three, going back to the basic variable. That is y bar st minus 35. This is t bar. It's a little bit high over there. Y bar is T bar minus 35. Therefore, T bar is Y bar plus 35. Whatever you have subtracted, add it back. You subtracted for simplicity. Now your purpose is achieved. Add it back. So this comes out to be 33.75. Standard deviation, your variance, it remains the same because it's about addition, subtraction. That is the answer. So now I'll just pause over here and I would like you people to try it out. So now let's look at the solution of this question. Question number 14, uh, sigma x minus 25 is 133. Sigma x minus 25 whole square is 3762. Mean of x bar. This is not y bar, this is x bar. That is this much. That means if you want to, you can say that let's subtract 25 from it. So 3.325, that is y bar. So what have I done over here? I have plugged in the value of y bar which is, uh, I have done it other way. 133 divided by the value of n. Do we have the value of n? We need to find the value of, I think this is the second part. Okay, this is the first part. Now over here, y bar is 133 over n, that is 28.325 minus 25, therefore the value of n comes out to be 40. That is the first part. The second part is, uh, then we have to calculate the SD. So standard deviation of Y is the same thing as standard deviation of X. That comes out to be 9.11. Find Sigma X squared. So standard deviation of Y and standard deviation of X is the same. Use this value, the 4SF value, 82.99. That is Sigma X squared over 40 minus 28.325. And hence Sigma X squared comes out to be 35412. That is the answer for this particular part. So now it's time to try out this particular question. I'll just pause the recording. So now let's look at the solution. This question says, a summary of 24 observations of X gave the following information. Sigma X minus A is negative 73.2. Sigma X minus A whole square is 2115. <laughs> the mean of these values of X is 8.95. Now, first of all, Y is equals to X minus A. And therefore, sigma y is negative 73.2. Sigma y square is this value. So y bar is equals to x bar minus a. First thing first, what is y bar? This is step number one. So let me just focus on this. This is step number one. That is, we find y bar. And then this is step number two. So now step number two is after you have found y bar, you will place y bar as negative 3.05, x bar is 8.95. Therefore, the value of a comes out to be 12. That's the first thing. Find the standard deviation of these values. That is basic thing. Uh, sigma y is this much. Sigma y square is this much. N is this much. Therefore, y bar is this much. So whether they ask for standard deviation of values of x or standard deviation of values of y is the same thing. So I just worked the easy way out and this answer comes out to be 8.88. So that completes this lecture on mean and standard deviation.